Hey, welcome to the show. This is TED Talks Too Much. And we've got another great one for you today. I am Ted Moss, ex-Planet Fitness member, stand-up comedian, and your host. We are located in the OK Boomer Studios, just outside of Flint, Michigan. Ha, that's right, Flint. Michigan's water wonderland, where they're still wondering when they'll get some clean water. But while we all wait for that, let's talk. And on today's show, we have a young man by the name of Mitch Gill. Been doing stand-up comedy for about six years now. A buddy of mine, he's going to talk to us a little bit about carpeting, comedy shows, and uh, why you should diet and what that has to do with dying. We'll be back with all that right after this. Before we start the show today, with all the craziness going on in the world, I want you to take a time out. That's right. Just take 90 seconds. Close your eyes, lean back, and listen. nice guy good buddy of mine he's gonna do what he can to help me out i'm not sure i'm listening though also gonna talk a little bit about comedy shows you're gonna find out what the sorcerer's stone really is and maybe even a little bit about mitch's girlfriend so anyhow let's give a okay boomer studio welcome to my good buddy mr mitch gill My my volume personally sounds a little lower than yours. Check one, two, one, two. Well, I might be closer to the microphone than you. You could be. We, we also have different microphones. Yes. You have a fancier microphone. I do. That's because I'm a fancier guy. What is that, Ridge? Road. 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 Yeah. Like well, I a, think I a just... Roadcaster, all I right? I think I just read about Road brand something... Just the other day, I was looking at yeah. road products. All right. Well, anyhow, let, let, let's go. Mitch Gill, welcome to the show. Hey. Hi, Ted. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I am so glad you're here. This is awesome. This is awesome. So you're going to put in new carpet. I, well, <laughs> I, I like to put in new carpet, because, but, but at first I want to redo my deck. I had to pee and I needed to go to the bathroom, so I purposely took off my shoes because I wanted to feel your carpet. I miss ah. it. And I love it. I'm a former carpet flooring professional. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I sold carpet. So you said Berber. What kind of Berber are you going to put in? Uh, anything from the country of Burr. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I there's have no, there's I have a no, lot of different kinds I of Berber. I want it to be a short nap and a loop and tight together. Mm -hmm. I want uh, multi colors Color, in it yep. of brown. So when my dog pees on it, it's not as obvious. Okay. What you want is you want uh, a couple different things. You either want a 100% continuous filament uh, nylon. Okay. 
Um, or or get like a wool. They make wool berber that's amazing. Is it and way too expensive? Though? It's very expensive. Yeah, but, yeah, no, 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 no. It's no, great. No, no, um, no, no, no. I don't need great. I'm too old. I won't live that long. I uh, only need something that's going to live as long as me, which is like what ten years. So you want max. you want your last car? <laughs> that boy's on his last berber. <laughs> uh, he went out on berber, <laughs> but now they're doing such amazing things with fab with uh, fibers. It's unbelievable. Yeah, the plastic stuff feels like wool. So well, the, the problem is that. Every shark in the world is selling carpeting on the side. Oh, yeah. It yeah. seems to be a real easy thing to make a lot of money on. Yeah. And everybody's got samples and sells it out of their yeah. van. There's a they warehouse don't install. like five miles yeah, from here. Yeah, but they don't install. Mm -hmm. It's just a guy with a van and samples yeah. making a percentage. What's the best way to buy carpeting? You can go to a, go to a retail store and say, look, I, here's what I've gathered online. This is my price. Here's here's what you got. This is what I want, and then they can either match it or get real close. Yeah, but to they're it. gonna say, but that's a different brand. That's well, not as good as ours. I don't want to go through all that. I'm I got a mohawk. With the bottom line: if you're gonna buy carpeting, where do you go to buy carpeting? I you can you can do it yourself in the sense of hire a uh, uh, installer. Hire an installer. He can get it. He'll get it from a, a warehouse, or you could go to a scaff or. Home Depot and get it from them. I don't want to pay for Scaff's overhead. I don't want to pay for their building. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I hear you. Yeah, there's got to be a better you. way than that. I mean, you can gather your price from your side guy and say, yeah. I want a total price, take out, install the whole nine yards and take that written down to Scaff right. or to a Home Depot well, you know and what? say, Maybe Here, this is my deal. This is how much I need. Can you beat this deal with this carpet? And they'll say yes or no. Oh, maybe I can buy it online. Mm -hmm. Have them just drop it at the front door. Yeah. You know, I, I actually bought a couch uh, about a month ago. It hasn't been delivered yet, but they will not bring it in the house. They're going to leave the couch outside my front door. Really? Yeah. And I'm old. I'm not really sure I can lift up a couch by myself to bring it in the house. I'm so gonna they're going to gonna leave your, your, your Davenport in the carport? Is that, <laughs> is that what they're going to do? <laughs> I'm so old. No people go like, what the hell's a Davenport? They're going to leave the couch for the slouch to bring in. That's what they're going to do. I don't know. That's awesome. Okay. But that's not what you really did. You, I mean, you've had a lot of jobs. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that uh, a while. Last time I saw you, I think, we spent an hour reviewing your life and your jobs. Mm -hmm. and, but one thing uh, was you were on the radio for a while, right? Yeah, for 13 years. Yeah, you're like a radio personality. Yep. I, I know about uh, headphones and microphones. Yeah. Yeah. And being a guest and hosting and telephones and telephone. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got a caller <laughs> next online too. We've got <laughs> actually, you know, it's funny. Um, there's a thing called solid state radio in Lapeer, Michigan. And, uh, is that the name of a company or is that it's, a, it's a it's company a, It's solid state radio.net. You could check it out right now if you wanted. What, is, what does it mean? It's a radio station, a very low wattage radio station right downtown Lapeer. And it's also on the internet. So it's very high wattage when you think of that. Yeah, considering yeah. Considering it goes all over yeah. the world. So anyhow, uh, my friend Adam Harahuck and Sean Cantwell yes. are the hosts of uh, the Armchair Athletes. And yes. Sean is also the program director of that station and your, your volume on your vocals is going in and out if you just be back from the mic a little bit okay. and be consistent yeah i think i'll have better sound quality okay. and How i'll cut that? that part a little bit more back all right a little, a little, bit, little bit more yeah, back. yeah yeah, yeah. that way that way it's, that's pretty it's hard. technical ted i don't right. know what more back means <laughs> When you're on a date, you say, I want more back. <laughs> more what back. <laughs> a little more back. Please. Can you more back that thing? Yeah, up? yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But before okay, so, you were a comedian, you were a radio guy. Yeah. And the and reason why I'm talking about that. State radio, but radio is dying. It, it is, but it's on the internet too. So well, on, on. Why uh, call it radio? That's like Joel Radio. Why call it radio? July 3rd, I'm going to be the morning host, uh, hearkening back to the original. Wings 103 radio station that I was on th like 30 years yeah, ago. But that's dead, dude. But yeah. it's on the internet. So it's also, they call it radio because there's still a lot of people your age and my age that still appreciate the, even just the sound of the name of radio because radio is still, I still listen to the radio. I listen to Banana 1015. I never listen to radio. What's that whistling? Is that I don't know. Phone? That's weird. Oh, you know what? It was my dryer or my washer or oh. something. Okay. Saying it's done. It's ready for the spin cycle. Yeah. <laughs> 
But really, I know you as a stand-up comedian. Yes. And uh, we took a class together, didn't we not? No, you were in the advanced class. Ah. And I was in the junior class, but I met you when Bill invited me to hang around for the advanced class. Ah, there you which go. Which was really nice. And yes. Tina Green was in there. Yeah, and, yeah. And Ron Rigby probably, maybe, No. Tina I don't know. I, I remember you and Tina. And, yeah, uh, was I pretty advanced at the time? Uh, yeah, I think, well, you were all more advanced than me because <laughs> I had just was only in comedy six months or so. Ah, okay, right. Right now, this month is my six-year anniversary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I started probably a year before you did or something I'm a like grizzled that. professional. No, you are. semi, uh, beginner. Heavy right on now. the grizzled. Yep, on the uh, beginner. Yeah, what do you think about it? I love it. I love it, and uh, it's a weird thing with this COVID thing because it made me reassess, what am I doing? Why am I driving two and a half hours (laughs) to be on a show for 10 minutes or... um, when I have to be to work at 7 a.m. the next morning, it's, right. it's, just, it's dangerous and it's reckless and right. I'm going to hurt myself or somebody else. So uh, I'm going to be a little bit more choosy. Yeah, but you I know, do. sometimes it's just fun. I drove up to Traverse City, mm-hmm. which is what, four and a half hours. Yeah. But I was in the car with Tina Green and Billy Reno. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so we, you know, we're all chatty. Oh, that would be great. And we I talked would... all the way up, all the way back, nine hours in the car, did 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. The weird thing was, though, and I was thinking about this with your shows, too. The weird thing about the show was it was at a little town outside of Traverse City. Mm-hmm. And Traverse City is a, a resort town in northwestern Michigan, for people that don't know. But there's this little bitty town, and it could have been more than 3,000 people that lived in the town. And a lot of the town was boarded up, but... There was a bar in the town, and when we hit town, I thought, boy, nobody's going to be at this show. Uh We drove up here, and we're going to perform for 12, 16 people. But we walked in. It was packed. Standing room only. They They were leaning against the walls. I mean, there had to be 150 people packed in this little bar Yeah. to watch the comedy. And I was explaining this to my son, and he said... They're starved for entertainment. Absolutely. And that's kind of like where you live. Yeah. You're out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Can't be a lot of live entertainment out there. Well, it is the county seat of Tuscola. <laughs> is Carol. That, is yeah. that Carroll, mm-hmm. Michigan? Yeah. Just like Carroll Syrup. Yeah, but it's weird. Uh, I've been doing live shows there for five years. Yeah. And it saw its heyday, and now it's falling off. Uh, attendance is... Way less. I mean, uh, I've lost money on shows. Really? Uh, now, you do it, uh, you have your shows at a nice theater there, right? No, it's the Brentwood, it's a bowling alley, and it's oh. the banquet hall in the back of the bowling alley. You could have a wedding in there. Oh. And uh, it has wall sconces on the walls. Oh, but now, I came to two of your shows, and one was an old theater. Oh, yeah, that's in Lapeer. Ah, and the other one was in a bar out in... A city that's named after some high tech something. Um, what's the other little city that? Oh, has? Cass City. No, 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 no. Uh, no it's named. Uh, there's a high tech thing that's named after the city. Um, it was a bar, and it had a railing going up to the bar. It stood behind. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, uh, there's a contractor, electrical contractor that used to be out of this little nothing town. And it was a really good show. It was a packed house. It's not Millington, was it? No. No, as soon as you say it, you're going to go, oh, yeah, that's the the electronic gadget that they make up there. I Gosh, I don't that. know. Hemlock. Hemlock Semiconductors. Oh, yeah, 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 Hemlock. yeah, yeah. Hemlock yeah, yeah. Semiconductors. Yeah. That God, was I'm with... old. I can't remember shit. <laughs> that you... was with Mike Ball. Wasn't that your show? No. No. Oh, I've well, you were at it. Anything You in... were the highlight of the show as was far as I? I was concerned. Jeez, thanks, Ted. Ah, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love doing it. It's great, it, but it's funny to watch the... Uh, no, it's not funny. It's sad to watch the ebb and flow of of comedy like in Cairo, Michigan, where I do my shows. Well, why uh, did the shows fall off? Did you have lousy <laughs> shows so people said, I'm not coming back to watch this shit? Not, did you have poor comedians? I don't think so. How yeah. much were you charging for the shows? Uh, 15 bucks. Oh, that's and not bad. Usually I'm giving money to charity also. 
But when when the when the attendance started falling off so much, it's like I got to make enough to, uh, you were to the pay charity. my people. <laughs> so I'm not even bothering doing the charity and the charities that that were coming on. They weren't helping any. They right. weren't getting people to come. So I thought, eh. And now after COVID, I'm just like I'm going to put the shows on whether anybody shows up or not. You know what? I, I've got a idea to do it in reverse order. What's that? How? Right now, the way shows are put on is somebody who wants to do a show as a promoter, a comedian, finds a location that they think will work. Mm -hmm. Then you talk to the owner and you talk about some kind of split deal where you get the door and they get the booze or whatever it is. And you make arrangements to have that show. You set it up and you invite comics. And then you try to market to his customers or people in the area to come see the show and put it on the internet. I say you find the audience first. You locate the people that are going out to be entertained that are going to be at a location sitting there waiting for entertainment to start. And then you build a show around them. So the first thing you locate is the audience. The last thing you locate are the comedians. So what, what do you go going around town looking for full bars? No, no. Like if you go to any, there's lots of things. If you go to any um, organization, like say a private golf club, they have a budget for entertainment every month and they have an entertainment committee and every golf club in Michigan has a monthly thing, a monthly event that's going to be their entertainment. Mm -hmm. So they say, well, this month let's have a dinner and we'll have somebody play records and we'll dance. Or this month we'll have a magician come in or this month we'll have whatever and if you go to all the golf and country clubs and say, I can bring in a show and here's the cost of bringing in a show. Now you're going to realize that they aren't budgeting like a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. yeah, They're budgeting and, and a that, couple thousand dollars and you can go in there and say, okay, I know you got to feed the people. So I'll take 1200 bucks and I'll bring in a show for you. And if you do it to all the country clubs, you could schedule almost every week a show where you have a captive audience that's yep. there to be entertained and listening. The problem with a bar is. No, that's, that's actually a really good idea. Thank you. And bars. Yeah. Bars are goofy, but on mine, mine is tickets are sold for people two people that want to go and see comedy. They're not waiting there and something's happening over their shoulder. Right. Right. They're I, going, what the hell? Well, that? I get that, you but know? you're saying that's dying off. And I'm saying, if you go to a bar, like most guys do, yeah. To put on a show. People don't go to the bars to sit silently for 90 minutes. Nobody yeah. says, hey, let's meet at the bar and not talk. Yeah, my, my <laughs> biggest problem is I'm spoiled by the venue. I love that room. I love how well, cozy it is. Well, you can perform to that room all day long and not have an audience. How are you yeah, feeling now? I know. Here, I'll give you another idea. I think this is a great idea. Um, movie theaters are struggling. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're struggling is you can get all the movies on your TV. You don't have to go out to a theater and they have this huge complex that they got to fill. And let me tell you, they have off nights. And the other problem with movies theaters is they all have the same movies. Yeah. So what are you offering that somebody else isn't see, offering? Didn't I see that? Didn't, isn't somebody doing that, uh, doing stand up before movies somewhere? It seems uh, like somebody, somebody was, tr was renting a theater. Did Sean, no. he was renting a room. He's renting the theater as a room and then trying to sell the room. Yeah. But my idea is to talk to the theater people and say, on Tuesdays, instead of running your ads, I'm going to do live stand-up comedy. I'm going to bring in me and a buddy of mine. I'm going to put him seated up in the audience. I'm going to have portable equipment that I'm walking around with it on my hip and a headphone. And I'm going to talk and meet and greet the people as they come in, do crowd work and then play off him. And he's going to be sitting in the audience and we're going to do a 10 minute show. And the neat thing is after that 10 minute show, because they rotate with the start times of, of movies in theaters, you could go from that theater to theater number four and do it there. Then theater number three and do it there. Then theater number one. And you only have to do like, a 15 minute set between two guys That's interesting. playing off people walking in. And then you say, now if you can get people in the area to know, by the way, Tuesday night is stand up comedy night at such and such a theater. Yeah. They'll go, let's go to the movies on Tuesday night and go to this theater. So you make that guy stand out 
amongst all the theaters. And, you know, I first saw this when I went to uh, SeaWorld. And we went in and we were seated. And it takes a long time to seat all the people at SeaWorld. Mm -hmm. And so they had kind of a comic mime down walking behind people as they sat down and kind of entertaining the crowd as they took a seat, just that entertainment part while people were settling in and he was talking to them and there was a little bit of noise, but you know, as people laughed about what he said, they listened more and more. So it'd give you a great chance to work on crowd work. Mm -hmm. It could be you and your buddy. You only do it on Tuesday nights. He's going to bring in more people and say, look at, let's figure out how many people you bring in. And I'm going to take 25% of the growth above. If you've, if you're averaging 500 people, and you sell to a thousand people, I'm going to get 25% or I'm going to get the fee for 125 of those people, the next 500 to pay for me and the other comic. And it'd be great practice to be a short set and you'd get really, really good at it after a while. I want the popcorn money. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, but I'm looking for places. If you think about a theater, everybody's sitting there waiting to be entertained, looking in one direction. They aren't mm-hmm. drinking. They aren't. They don't have their backs to you. They're at, you have their attention. You have a nice little stage to be down. Yeah, in front you have their attention, perform. but the, the, there's going to be people that I didn't sign on for this. What's this bullshit? You no, know? you what, put what, a sign out front, stand up comedy. Yeah, and all you're doing, you aren't telling dick jokes. You're yeah. talking about what the people are wearing and walking in and welcome in. You know, yeah, I have to work on that. I've not done that much. I know I was in radio for a long time and I can think on the fly, but that's one of the next stages for me is to work on crowd work. Well, you know, Steve Martin used to stand out in front of drive in theaters and he would do comedy as the people were just driving up to get their tickets. So he just doing one liners. He's doing 30 seconds to one minute worth of jokes to but, each car. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, as they're in line, wait, you know, talking to the people in line. Oh, that's it's cool. great. Yeah. And actually I bought a little microphone that goes on my hip with a strap. It's what coaches use. Like if they're football coaches and they want to yell across the, the field and oh, there's yeah. a headset with a microphone. Do so you cover coming? your mouth every time you talk? No, so no. the other team can't read your lips. No, dude, it's for practice. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, I think you have to think outside the box. Yeah. But that's better than playing to 12 people in Carol yeah. or a group of 50 people in the bar when 12 of them don't care. Yeah. And they're going to talk during the show. Yeah, I hate that. But that that's part of learning the business is playing to people that aren't, aren't paying any attention. Yeah. And to eight comics that are reading their phones. That's and why, not laughing at anything. Yeah, but that's but why. But you're right. You're right That's about, why I'm saying do it in, in reverse. Find an audience that's waiting to be entertained. Mm-hmm. That says, let's get dressed up, honey, and go out tonight, okay, to be entertained. Yeah. And then if you could be the entertainment, rather than saying, hey, I'm going to try and draw people in, make them get dressed up and come out to this location to sit in a bar quietly for 90 minutes other than laughing. Mm-hmm. That's a hard get. Yeah. I did really good for a few years. I mean, I was like packing that place. It was awesome. Uh, but it, they, they, then, then you got to change. Got to evolve. Then they, then they just, they just quit coming. It's like they, they thought, well, we'll just go back to the, uh, to the bar and just sit there. Well, think about this. When Mitch has got a kick-ass live entertainment show okay. in our town that we don't have to drive forty-five minutes to Saginaw. I feel like saying, what is the matter? Why would you not go? Well, think about it. If you had a radio show. I would be at every show if, if I was If you had a radio on. show and you had a bunch of listeners and all of a sudden they in mass started not listening. Mm-hmm. They were listeners and they were listening daily or whatever. And then mass, they started not listening. What does that tell you? Um, I you got to so. do something different. Yeah, I guess so. Whatever you're doing isn't working. The pro- you know, the problem with people is their, their egos get in the way yeah, but of I did, success. I wasn't doing anything different. I was still booking really good comics, and it was crazy and fun. Well, it's no, like, no, no, what? no. You need to do something different other than booking good comics that are crazy and fun. That's not... That's not the deal. Yeah. That, they're not, if they're not coming to that, you have to swallow your pride and go, you know, what the definition of insanity is to yeah. keep doing the same thing and think something else is going to happen. Mm-hmm. You have to be strong enough to go, that doesn't work. 
let me try this. Yeah. You know what? And if your shows are just staying the same, they aren't growing, they aren't getting bigger, they aren't getting more popular, you have to change. Now, sometimes it goes down when you change, but that's good. When I was in Mm -hmm. business, this is what we did. In order to get better, we changed continually. Yeah. And people give you ideas like movie theaters or ideas like golf clubs. Mm -hmm. You should think man, maybe I should try something like yeah. that. Why don't I find it's an audience you're, first? Because you're an entrepreneur gorilla. <laughs> That's what you are. <laughs> because I don't have to do the work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so easy to tell somebody else how to do it. Yeah. But but no, you, you're right. You're right. And that is, if I, if I want to do that, I will. Uh, I, I'm learning that as I get older... Um, I'm not forcing me to do anything anymore. How old are you, Mitch? Well, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be 56 years old on Saturday. Oh, congrats on that! Thank That's you. a long time, man. You're half done. I am. I am. That was like these two fingers on my left hand. I broke them in 2011, and uh, you chose not to get them fixed. No, my my brand new ex wife said about a year and a half later. She said. Those fingers look terrible. You should go back to that doctor and have them break them and fix them right. And I said, uh, no, I'm already halfway done with these. Forget it. <laughs> but actually, if I straighten them hard, they straighten out. So. Okay. But yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not forcing me to do anything anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm finding a new comfort zone. Yeah. With, well, with I think my, you have to. I think that's good. Yeah, because, because I'm going to be dead in 50 in 49 years i'm going to be dead and <laughs> if i keep, if you had to predict what year how old do you think you're 105 no really yeah how old did your parents live um live to 79 be. and 77 okay so the odds are you're not making 80 dude but dad died uh from a three-year battle of lung cancer from smoking well and you could still take up smoking mom died of a stroke suddenly and that was 10 years ago and since then i've made efforts to fix the things that took them away for myself but see why do you want to add years on the tail end you want to add years on the front the tail end years are miserable after you get to be about 65 70 add years on to the front end it's (laughs) tough because they come and go and you can't add to them but these I can add, and I have, and I've made uh, great strides to make my life and my physical life much better. You're going to be so miserable when you're the only one alive. No, I'm going to You're going to be the only and... old white man that everybody's going to be attacking. And from what I'm learning, I should probably have a memory to be able to remember all my friends. <laughs> I'm learning more stuff all the time. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Are you keeping track of your friends that are passing away? What were we talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I think of them. I think of them a lot. Actually, uh, there's a guy. I honestly, do. There's a guy in my high school that actually posts every time somebody from our high school passes away. Now it was a small high school. I mean, our graduating class was probably 150 people. Mm-hmm. If and so uh, every time he posts a name, I pull out my yearbook. And I put black X's through their eyes. So when I go through the yearbook, I'll, I'll that remember. That is brilliant. I think Thank that's... Uh, I would have put a star next to their name, <laughs> but I like the black X's. <laughs> How about it's F like they, him, hated him anyhow. No. It's like they went to sleep, dude. Their eyes, the light did went out of her. Eyes. Glad I did when she was alive. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep track. <laughs> Actually, a third of my graduating class is gone. Really? Yeah. But I'm, I'm turning 68 this year. Well, so I'm older than you. You look incredible. Oh, man. You haven't seen me naked. I even look better naked. It's crazy. 68. God yeah, damn. I know. Well, I'm 67. Let's not push it. That's not till August. So you got to start doing what I'm doing. No. I'm so. What I'm doing is working, dude. No, it's not. It is. It's not. It is. What? Okay. What do you think you can beat me at? You're a year younger. You're much healthier. You're on a better diet. Is there something you can do better than I can do? I have some great ideas about movie theaters and golf courses. No, I, I mean challenge. I mean physical challenge. Oh. Ride uh, a bike, run. What? I mean, what? what 
I'm on. Bring it on. What do you got? Well, th- this is the, this is the Lift beginning. Weights. This is the beginning of what's happening with me <laughs> physically. I, uh, yeah, your fingers don't look like they were broken. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I went gluten free in 2011. Yeah. That was a game changer. I lost 45 pounds. I know you told me to do that and I tried. Oh my God. It was the best. I still encourage anybody to. You're a little st- thin. Uh, right I, now. I would, I would put on like 20 if I was you. I checked the, the body mass index yesterday and I am, according to the body mass index, I am normal. And normal, what I have found is out it is. it for Asians? No, normal is the weight for your frame. And that is my height uh, matches my weight. And, and it's interesting. And then I looked at it, I thought, yeah, it's a little bit thin. What's, what, what's your height and what's your weight, if you don't mind sharing? Right now, I am five foot eight and I'm 135 pounds. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Dude, you need to be 155. It's, That's too light. It's You're low. You're disappearing. It's You're low. You're almost anorexic. You just haven't realized but it. But there's a reason for it. The reason is... Uh, Gluten free in 2011 had me leveling out about 165. That was pretty nice. Yeah, it's all good. I still well, that, felt I still felt fat, but I looked pretty good. 165. Yeah, that's yeah. not fat. Yeah. Um, Are you sure you aren't anorexic? No, I'm not. No. Have, have you thought about that? Uh, bear with me. Uh, and then at 50 years old, which is six years ago, I quit drinking. That helped. Lost a couple of pounds there. Feeling really good. Then um, I lost, uh, believe it or not, I lost about 150 pounds when I got divorced. Um, but, you know, just kidding. Um, but I'm, I haven't found her yet. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm just joking about yeah. that. Uh, but I did get divorced. Uh, yeah, you know, I can cut the jokes out. Yeah, so that, that had, that had, <laughs> I do edit this thing. <laughs> that had nothing to do with it. Uh, then in... Um, July 4th, 2018, I went on a limited meat diet where I started eating meat only three days a week. Yeah. And that was really interesting. How did that make you feel? I felt very good. I felt very good. I felt... Uh, felt. I, I went on an all meat diet. Yeah. And how, did that make, how did that make you feel? Well, I was losing a half a pound a day. Yeah. And I, got, I lost... Uh, I went from 240 to 207. Mm-hmm. And it was easy. Every day I'd weigh myself half pound up. I mean, on average, some days not as much, some days pound and a half or whatever, but I was just going down, down, down. But I would have a steak and for a side, um, a side item, a I would have a, I'd have a hamburger. A hamburger, yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the all meat diet. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? Because of uh, heart the- disease. Uh, it's it's not good for our bodies yeah, to be but running you know on it, it, meat. Yeah, but if you want, if you're going to go, you want your heart to go. I don't want to go. Yeah, but you're going to go. You're going to go. At I some don't want to go for well, 49 years. Okay, but let, let's face it. At some point, you're going to go. What you don't want to go first are your legs. Because you don't want to be in a wheelchair. You don't want to be in a diaper. Right. So you don't want your legs to go. You got to keep your legs working. Mm-hmm. You also don't want your brain to go. You don't want to be, you know someplace where you're only half there and people are having to take care of you because you, you have no idea what's going on. Mm-hmm. You also don't want your nervous system to go where you're drooling on yourself and you don't have use of your arms and you're, you know, you don't want the stroke thing yeah. happening. But so if you have to choose a way to go, you don't want to get hit by a car. You know, you don't want to choke on something. You don't want to drown. I could get you hit don't want to be electric. I yeah. ride my bicycle a lot. Yeah, but you don't want that. That's going to be a not fun experience for anybody having you splattered all over the road. Mm-hmm. You know, so what you want to happen, really. Let's choke on a steak. No. <laughs> no, choke on the hamburger helper. If no, you, you want, you want your rib, heart I to stop. would have been tenderer, you want, rarer, <laughs> and he would have been able to swallow that. But that T-bone your, killed him. You want your heart to stop. And then, then the blood stops going to your brain. Everything nope. shuts off, just like going to sleep. No. Nope. Yes, that's what you want. You nope. might have a pain for a second, I would, but we all have heartburn. I so. will put my foot down and say I would much rather have Tom Petty here now <laughs> than have him dead. From <laughs> yeah, but if you, how do you want to go? How do you want to go? Really? Worst way? I'll tell you what. Worst way to go. Best way to go. Oh, I wouldn't mind uh, just passing away in my sleep someday. Yeah, but how does that happen? What stops? 
It's your heart. Passing away, that's what you're asking to happen. I don't you know. You want to go up by having your heart stop. Well, how, do you, not, how do you not want to go? How about that? I don't want to go because of something that I could have changed, like my diet. I did change my diet, and I was getting to the point where so you mean I, when you go to die, you don't want to have the last thought in your head, head be, oh, damn, I could have changed something to make this not happen absolutely. for another year. Absolutely. That's what you're worried about. Absolutely. And, I'm and worried I, about cold, deep water. I don't want to be, I don't want to go on a cruise to Alaska, fall off the boat and be in cold water because I hate cold water anyhow and think, oh, fuck, I'm drowning mm-hmm. and have the water churning from the propellers. That song, isn't and be it going ironic? Down. Yeah, I don't, that's what I don't want. Yeah. And it may be because in a prior life, that's how I went. I don't know. That could be. But I don't want to go that way. I want to go by having my heart shut down. That's how my dad went. And he, you know what? He went to Chicago and was dancing with girls at a wedding the week before, drove all the way back from Chicago, four and a half hours. And then his heart went. But why not? Why not make your heart work so good that you can remember those memories for. That's great. And then at the end, what? You get stabbed? Yeah, you fall into a meat grinder. You fall, you you know, you fall fall into a a building or something. You could have a bear hold you down and eat you alive. And that would take a while, but you could be in great shape when it happened. Uh, you want your heart to shut down. That's no. what you want. I Actually, I don't know, and I don't care how it happens. I just don't want it to happen for a long time, and that's why I've made these changes. <laughs> I went on the limited meat diet for a year and a half, and then uh, in early February, late March of this year, yeah. Jan- January, late January, I watched some documentaries. I watched five documentaries. I'm going to tell you the five that have changed my life so far. And it's only been since February 2nd. I watched. But I don't want to weigh 135 pounds, dude. Well, that this is my process. This is, I, I'm not done yet. So let, let me explain first. I became a vegetarian on February 2nd. <sighs> thanks to watching The Game Changers on Netflix. Um, Forks Over Knives. I watched that when years ago. That's been out since yeah. 2011. I watched What the Health, uh-huh. Cowspiracy, and Eating Animals. Those one, two, three, four, five, five documentaries sealed the deal for me because they, they explained to me in the clearest terms possible that it's better for me physically and, and mentally and for my health, and it's better for the planet, and it's better for animals. And all three of those things work in conjunction to make me think that I just don't... I, it took me out of that whole factor of, geez, if I eat meat, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get congestive heart failure someday, or I'm going to have a stroke. And if I eat dairy, it's going to result pretty much in the same thing. And... Uh, and plus the environment, we can't sustain feeding all these animals and the waste that comes from it just to feed us. Don't you think by nature we're meant to be carnivores? I don't. I used to think so because of these two sharp teeth. The canines. But mostly the 90% of our teeth are, are grinders to, to grind up vegetables. Yeah, but most animals eat animals. Not most of them. Like... The, the 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 great the great big ones like uh like an elephant you know an ox those eat vegetables and that's that's all they eat is vegetables well let so, me ask you this hmm. when noah put all these animals on the ark two by two what did the car- carnivores eat um what well, uh i don't know and when they got off and all the other animals in the world are dead, other than two of each, what did they eat? I don't really know if that story is very true to begin with. <laughs> I think by nature we're meant to eat animals. And I think, I think uh, it's good for me. It might not be. And I have not studied it because I don't know. I have no idea. I would say watch but, the Game Changers. It's an excellent yeah. current documentary. All right, and but it's, to grow uh, all the plants you want to eat, they displace a lot of animals. And they put pesticides and stuff on the ground and they kill a lot of little 
yeah. things that are come natural, they do a lot of things to grow all those vegetables. Yeah, but if you, you know? look at the and amount I, of deforestation for grazing of animals that's happening in the world, if you look up those facts, Google that, you'll be blown away at how much like the rainforest is getting ripped down every day so animals think, can graze. You think they're ripping down the rainforest to raise cattle? Hey, man, go look for yourself. I don't think there are big cattle farms in the rainforest. You there think is. there are? Mm hmm. Oh, all right. There is. And, and the, the, the waste that comes from all the animals that have to be produced so we can eat them at McDonald's and Burger King and every. Are those animals? I'm not sure those are even animals. Oh, man. It's, it's huge. Just watch a few documentaries. Well, yeah. e- even just watch the game changers and forks overnight. Just those two. It's yeah. a few hours. And are you okay with people who aren't 100% vegans or yep. vegetarians? This is my, this is personal for me. Yeah. And I just wanted to take me out of that equation. Of, yeah. Well, how uh, skinny are you going to get? I, that, that was the other part of my journey is figuring out vegetarianism and understanding uh, how many grams of protein I should get and how many grams of fat per day. Well, you know what? I, I know a girl, uh, Facebook friends of mine, uh, Lisa Veger, I think is her name, and she wrote um, a cookbook for vegetarians. Really? With yeah. a name like Veger. That's funny. Uh, yeah. But in any case, uh, she's... And so, and what, what, now how does her book handle getting too thin? I asked her to send me a copy of her book and she didn't, so... Really? Yeah. So there well, you go. she should because you could talk about it on your podcast. I also, yeah, I also asked her to uh, tell me where I could buy her book, and she didn't. So, did you get in her pants? No, um, uh, she's a vegan, so I unfriended her eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough of this nonsense. <laughs> I need a That's woman funny. who eats meat. <laughs> yeah, what's the name of her book? I have no idea. Okay, I haven't been friends with her for a while. So, but no, she's so- she's really cute and seemed nice, and and she wasn't very skinny. And yeah. I think that's weird because every friend I've ever had that became a vegetarian really got pretty skinny. Well, there's there's fake vegetarians and vegans out there that eat, you know, Oreos are are vegan. Well, you know, my you know. my uncle was a vegetarian back in 1970. Really? Yeah, when nobody was a vegetarian. He was a hippie vegetarian. Uh, well... He was a different kind of guy. Yeah. He was an outside-the-box thinker. I have an uncle that is also an outside-the-box And box I remember thinker. going to Burger King with him, and he'd have a, a Whopper hold the meat. Whopper hold the meat, yep. Yeah. and uh, But the reason he did it was for religious reasons. Mm-hmm. He belonged to a religion called the I Am Society. Really? Yeah, meaning I exist, I am, I am, I am, you know, God said I am that it's I am. It's all about that, me. No, no, it's about God. And they believe that uh, uh, Christ has been reincarnated, and they can even tell you who he is currently. That through, you know, so they even know who Christ is right now. But the interesting thing about Uncle Bill, if I can tell the Uncle Bill story, yeah, is that Uncle Bill was a really wild guy. I mean, in college, uh, he ran for most popular man on campus at Michigan State University. Mm-hmm. And they put an upright piano on the back of a pickup truck and took him to all the sorority houses. And he's really good looking. And he played boogie woogie and just smiled, didn't say anything. And he won like most popular guy on campus. Really? Back, yeah, back in <laughs> like the 1940s or something like that. But then he used to drive around in a, I remember he had a drop top Cadillac that was, uh, was yellow. And he had all this gangster clothes. And I remember the uh, the hydraulics. Those Cadillacs used to have hydraulics, so they'd level on the road. So if you went around a curved road, it'd actually level it out. It yeah. was broken. So it was always tilted up or tilted down. It was always tilted the wrong way because the hydraulics were always acting goofy <laughs> in his drop top. But eventually, he found this religion, and he became kind of the religious me- medicine man of the religion. He had discovered, and he always liked treasure hunts. Once he asked me to go on a treasure hunt, he said, Ted, I got this, uh, I got the location of this treasure map. And uh, I went down and I think I know where it is because I went down to this country and it was, you know, somewhere in Cuba or some freaking place you aren't supposed to go. And he went down there and he wanted to take one of those uh, metal detectors. But they had like federales and you had to stay in your tour group. It was that kind of thing. So he put the head of the metal detector in a gym bag and then he ran the wire of it up through his sleeve to his <laughs> ear 
And then he broke away from his group and he was walking around the beach holding the gym bag, but the gym bag handle wasn't quite low enough. So he actually had to bend his knees and kind of squat. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. this beach. Yeah. And while all these federales with their automatic weapons are watching this American <laughs> walk around the beach. And he, he's financing his vacation by wanted, finding jewelry on yeah. the beach. <laughs> Smart guy. And he found the he found the location where this buried treasure was on this island. And he wanted to do a night landing. And he asked me if I'd be interested in hopping in, flying down to Florida, hopping in a boat and doing a light night landing and taking shovels. And uh, digging up this treasure. No kidding. And I said, no. But down the road, he found a bigger treasure. And what he found out is that uh, there was a cipher. There was a code written into the works of Shakespeare. Hmm. And he found out. Is Tom Hanks in this story? No. (laughs) No, this is a true story. Okay. This is a true story. And he found out about this doctor that had put the works of Shakespeare together and you couldn't miss one period or one punctuation mark and you had to put the old stories in the right order and he put them all on a big scroll it's in like the correct texting. order. You can't, you can't leave out punctuation. That's right. They won't get the exactly. idea. And this doctor had quit his job to pers- try to decode the cipher in the works of Shakespeare and he died. But he worked on this for like 20 years my uncle located his assistant, the lady that worked with him, and found out the scroll had been purchased by somebody who went to Europe and then repurchased by somebody else and came back to New England. My uncle went to New England, bought the scroll, brought it back and worked on it and deciphered. He claimed that he deciphered the code, the Shakespearean works. And when you only read certain words and then you skip words and then you read certain words, mm-hmm. It tells the story of the man that wrote all the works of Shakespeare and he lived for 600 years and he learned how to live this long life because he found, um, the Atkins diet. (laughs) No, he found the, uh, uh, what is it called? The Harry Potter thing. They were, uh, uh, Oh, the porn that was made, the Harry Pooter and the Sorcerer's Bone. Do you think you're helping me? No, I'm no, sorry. I know you're doing jokes. I get um, it. The ring. No, no. The Sorcerer's Stone. He found the Sorcerer's oh, okay. Stone. And what the Sorcerer's Stone is, it tell, it te- he taught him how to make gold out of base metals. And I went over to my uncle's house after he had discovered this, and he had Bunsen burners, at least 200 of them, going all around his house boiling down this stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? He said, I'm making gold. <laughs> and I said, okay. Makes me and wish I, I said, still drank because I don't want to party with your uncle. <laughs> yeah. And I said, okay. Well, and at this time. He's got my crazy uncle B. He's got like, he's like 65 years old. But he is, uh, he's found the answer how to make gold out of base metal. And did he, he in fact make it? Well. And what carrot was it? Well. He came to my office, and this was when I was running a, a business. And he came to my office to use my fax machine to do something at one time. And I was telling him I just had surgery on my thumb because I had a trigger figure. My thumb was locking down. Mm-hmm. And I said, I got to go back in for my other thumb. Get your EPL tendon fixed. And he said, I figured out how Reci- to... How, recipe for gold. Well, no, the source is stone. And really what it is is you eat pure gold. And this is what Cleopatra and the ancients used to do because it would prolong their life and it would heal anything that's wrong with you. He said, inside your body, there's like another body. And if it shrinks too much, you have illness. But if, if you can expand it, it regenerates everything. Hmm. He said, would you like to try some? It'll heal your thumb. And I'm at work. I'm mm-hmm. standing outside talking to him at work. I'm wearing a suit, white shirt, tie. You know, I'm at work, work. So he held a little bag up, and shook I a little said, gold down your gullet? I said, sure. And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a vial of what looks to be gold dust. Is this his homemade gold? Yes. Oh, shit. Yes. I think I'd eat yes. some real gold from yes. the jewelry store. Yes. But and then, but it looks like gold, dude. But at least one good thing is his gold, you didn't have to worry, was in some Jewish guy's mouth. <laughs> 
back <laughs> when oh, the Nazis, no. when the Ooh. Nazis. Well, no, seriously, I, I don't want to think about that. That's gross to think. I know, about, but let's but go back to the happy story. Okay. Bitch. okay. I didn't mean to bring the Nazis <laughs> into it. I know. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about Hitler. In the middle of this. Well, when you talk gold, that's that that is a reality of life. Yeah. Okay. So in any case, <laughs> he's gonna add it. He takes out a popsicle this. stick out and he sticks it in the container. Brings out just a little mound Did he of lick gold. The popsicle stick first. He said, "Put it on your tongue and just and let it dissolve." The gold would dissolve on nah, your tongue? Yeah, actually, you end up swallowing it. That's yeah. what happens. So I put it on my tongue. I go, okay. And I get back to Popsicle Stick. I go, okay. I've appeased my uncle. Great. I'm going to get well. And we're talking. And no less than two minutes later, I'm fucking stoned. I'm like, so. <laughs> really? See, I'm like, holy shit. I said, well, I think I got to go in now. I thought you were going to say, uh, well, it didn't fix my thumb, but I was regular as a Timex after that for about four hours. <laughs> Two huge poops. I went in, <laughs> shut my office door, and just buzzed out for the rest of the day. So he conned you into taking acid. And. While you were at work. It healed my thumb. I never had to have surgery on my other thumb. Really? Yeah, really. Well, I'm, uh, I think I'm, I think I'm on the, uh. A similar path here. I'm not getting stoned, but I feel. Yeah, but if I, I feel so good now, if I give you some of the sorcerer's stone to ingest, will I eat a steak? You no. can eat anything you want. I will not. It'll heal. It'll heal. I'm you. still. I'm still sticking to the fact that I've removed <laughs> myself from that equation. No, I, I still. That's, that was a great story. I've got to learn more about eating vegetarian. And I, I need to make sure I'm. But you eating still haven't answered my question. Every day, how much do you want to weigh? I mean, uh, how much do I want to weigh? One hundred and thirty-five at fifty-six years old. I'd like to weigh around one forty-five. Ten more pounds would be fine with me. If that, I'll, I'm, I'll I'm cook actually, us a steak. I'm actually pretty comfortable at this at this weight. I, I'm I've uh, started to lift some weight, so I'm going to try to. Get my get my upper body a, a little bit bigger. Um, now, are not, you married? Not very much. No. Do no. you have a girlfriend? No. Hmm. <laughs> okay. No, I have a friend, and uh, she and I have lunches, but nothing's going anywhere yet with that. It's just a very nice friendship. So, is she bigger than you? No. See, I'm wondering if you get too light, if it limits the women you can date. Eh, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not terribly concerned with that because I'm not pushing myself. And yeah, how'd to, you meet this girl? Um, sort of knew her from around town, and then wound up working uh, semi professionally through a uh, charity. Um, so, and then she did a show with me to where I gave her the proceeds. It was one of my losing shows, uh, but she still. But in this case, I still gave her. I still gave her her t- what she would get from it. Um, so, but it's great. She's she's wonderful, and and she respects. Does she have my, a name? She respects my vegetarianism. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not going to bother saying it. Okay, I'm, I don't want to. Cindy, no. Lucy, no. <laughs> Margaret, no. <laughs> this could be fun. Keep going, Ted. Uh, okay. <laughs> you are on a traditional slant well, there. You don't want to. You don't want to say because it, there might be more than one girl out there that might hear this and think it's her. Uh pretty unlikely. <laughs> 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 okay. no, but I- anyhow, my idea to talk to you about about this and these uh, these documentaries is to get people to think about your listeners in particular, and you, to think about cutting back on meat one meal a week or one day or a couple days or whatever, but to take meat out of the equation for a portion of of your diet. Well, if it's one meal, that would be great. If you just had a salad instead of meat every single meal, then, then you're going to start it's not it, the, our whole food intake is a giant clump of all right
right, that's going to do it for the show. There's only so much food guilt I can take in one setting. But uh, Mitch Gill's coming from a good place, and I appreciate that. He's trying to help me out. But he's got more to say on more topics, so look for that coming up soon. And in the meantime, you can always uh, send me a message at TED Talks too much at yahoo.com or follow me on Instagram at TED Talks Too Much. But until next time, try to be kind to each other out there. Really, please try to be kind to each other, please. And uh, try, just try to be happy, would you? Everything's going to be okay. So until next time, I'm Ted Moss, and those are my thoughts.